Hey guys, so I'm all clear, but like many of us, we're all trapped at home at the moment with not a lot to do. Now I've been keeping myself busy around the home, but there's one article that came up today that I couldn't let go more than a moment longer before producing a video on. I am no script, no talking points. This is just a talk straight at you. I am totally unprepared for this. I do have a few videos that I am preparing for. I want to talk to you about the future of work. Um, I want to talk to you about the future of our economy, what that's going to look like in the future. I want to talk to you about the future of geopolitics and world power. These tables are going to shift and change. And the future of truth and consequences. What a lie means now that we've finally seen some consequences in our lifetime. But that's not today. That's I'm still trying to script and put together. If you want to give me a hand, drop me a message. Um, I'd love the help to try and put something that I'd really be proud of. I'd love your help. But the article today I'm going to walk you through is from Fairfax, which you're going to pull up right here. I'm going to talk you through it because with everything that's happening right now, you might miss out on it. And even if I reach just a handful of people who haven't heard about this, that's enough for me. Earlier today, um, morning, the Sydney Morning Herald from Fairfax put uh, this article together they got an inside line on. Chinese-backed companies sourced Australian medical supplies. So, let's dive into this article, shall we? Um, as the coronavirus took hold in Wuhan earlier this year, staff of the government-backed global property group Greenland Group were instructed to put their normal work on hold and source a bulk supplies of essential medical items to ship back to China. A whistleblower from the company told the Herald it was a worldwide Greenland effort. Greenland? Who's Greenland? Let's have a look at their website, shall we? So, yeah, look, if you're anything like me, this... Uh, isn't going to make much sense to you. Um, thankfully, they have an English version of their page. Helpful for us. Founded in Shanghai in 1992, it holds the distinction of being recognized as a global Fortune 500 company for seven consecutive years since debuting on the Forbes Fortune 500. And um, wow, this is a big company. Projects in 100 cities, nine countries, including homegrown Australia. Develop, leader in development of ultra high rise buildings. Okay. All right. We know the type. Thank you. Greenland Group. Surgical masks, thermometers, antibacterial wipes, hand sanitizers, gloves, and Panadol for shipping from Australia to China. The company even posted efforts of its packing pallets in the company's Sydney headquarters on social media. This is February. This isn't January when we weren't sure what was going on. This is February. All employees, the majority of whom are Chinese, were asked to source whatever medical supplies they could, one insider told the Herald. This exercise went on for weeks through January and February. The entire accounts department, contract managers, human resources, and even receptionists were sent on missions to find bulk supplies of thermometers, hand sanitizer, gloves, and Panadol. Now we know what all those videos that we see of groups of people buying these materials up were. And so often we were told were fake. There were numerous requests from the HR manager and even our direct reporting line prioritized the assisting of the company in gathering those supplies over all other work activities. They felt compelled to assist in efforts to mitigate the spread of the virus, which had caused a shortage of crucial medical supplies in China. The boardroom of Greenland's headquarters in Market Street were used to repack the medical items into boxes stamped with the company's logo. Pallet loads of the medical supplies were then sent to China. Sherwood Lowe, the managing director of Greenland, posted photos of it occurring on social media. Here he is now, celebrating the completion of one of their projects in 2019. Congratulations, Sherwood. At this time, China was battling the epidemic. We only had 15 known cases and they'd had a lot more. Three million protective masks. Three million protective masks. 700,000 hazmat suits, 500,000 pairs of protective gloves. Well, we sold them to them. They're theirs, bought and paid for, right? 
The Green Line Group organised manpower, material struggles, and protective clothing. It's just distasteful. They run down to office works, pick up the boxes, pack them up, and send them back to China. But is it unfair? And that's what we're all trying to ask and trying to work out. And why I'm producing this is to say, so what? What's wrong with this? Is, is, it, is it wrong? Well, certainly the narrative we're told is it's fine. Hug someone from another country and love them because they'll help us back. Well, can we expect these back now? I'm not so sure. But of course we can. And besides, even if we don't, that's just fine, right? Why should we expect them back? We sold them. Bought and paid for. Fair trade, right? Problem is, this isn't the only instance of this. Fairfax came out with a second article not a few hours ago. This would have been around, there we go, about an hour ago. Here it is here. A second develop, developer flew 82 tonnes of medical supplies to China. A second Chinese property company based in Sydney flew more than 80 tonnes of medical supplies by a corporate jet to Wuhan in late February. This is by Kate McClemont. Well done on her for getting this scoop. The chartered plane with 90 tonnes of medical supplies, including 100,000 of protective coveralls, 900,000 pairs of medical gloves, departed Sydney and arrived in Wuhan on the 24th of February, not a month ago. Here is Rizland Australia's CEO, Dr. Ho Guo Tao Hu, farewelling the supplies to be shipped back from Australia to China. Rizland, formerly known as Country Garden, is a totally owned subsidiary of Country Gardens, one of China's largest property developers. Its major shareholder is 38 year old Yang Hu Yan, the richest woman in China. Let's have a look at uh, Rizland's website in Australia. Holistic living, brighter futures, residential development for a modern and thriving Australia. Well, I'm sure we can be looking forward to living in your Wilton Green soon. Date of completion 2035 in Wallandilly Shire. Congratulations on picking up 432 hectares and a billion dollars of worth. Hmm. Big company. A whistleblower from the company, Rizland Holdings, told the Herald it was a worldwide Greenland effort and the Sydney office was no different, sourcing bulk supplies of surgical masks, thermometers, antibacterial wipes, hand sanitizer, gloves and panadol for shipping worldwide. So here we have a Chinese company and their employees coming together, looking out for their own. Oh, that's good. All employees, were asked, the majority of whom are Chinese, were asked to source whatever medical supplies they could. The humanitarian efforts of Chinese companies to help their desperate compatriots back home may have contributed to shortages of products in Australia. By late January, medical experts were worried about lack of, Australia, of available masks in Australia. The thing we need most as GPs is some masks, is Dr. Harry Nespolon, president of the Royal Australian College of GPs. They are not readily available. Professor Rena McIntyre, a global biosecurity expert at Curry Institute in Sydney, also expressed concern about the shortage. In one major Sydney hospital, junior doctors are being told there are only 30 N95 masks available for all the operating theatres. The healthcare worker said this was forcing people to source masks in the black market. The Greenland Group sourced 3 million protective masks. 700,000 hazmat suits and 500,000 pairs of protective gloves from several countries, including Australia. And here is Rizlan CEO and the general manager, Ray Z, and the human resources and administration company's manager all coming together with one banner, China, Australia, work as one to fight epidemic. The epidemic where? In China. Well, that's good. I'm glad we can help China. They're very important. Why, why wouldn't we? Why are we even upset about this at all? In February, Rizlan's LinkedIn page showed pallet loads of safety gear. Look at it here. Being stored in a warehouse ready for shipment. 90 tons of selective medical supplies ready 
for the air transport direct from Sydney to Wuhan via corporate jet. The LinkedIn post said it was an exceptional and meaningful day for the company and its campaign to show its strong faith to Wuhan people. Well, that's good. That's important. Got to come first. And our appreciation to those who work days and nights and fight against the virus at the front line. Nope. Very important. Got to have that hierarchy straight. And we can see here where the hierarchy is. So we wouldn't want to be upset about this hierarchy. Who is? Richard McGregor, a China analyst at the Lowy Institute, said Green Line and Country Garden would have been expected to not only do their part, but to publicise their patriotism by helping out the country at a crucial moment. Very good, very good. It's important we know where everyone's loyalties lie. Very important. In China, where companies live and die according to government decisions, real estate companies are particularly exposed to government whims, he continued, as all land is owned by the state. That's good. We have some equality in that uh, country, and I guess we do here as well. So that galled me, and I knew that I needed to sit down for 15 minutes and at least reach a few who didn't know about this. Um, the rules are clear. The hierarchy is transparent. Um, you can make your judgment about you how, how you feel about it, um, and I'd encourage you to speak to your friends and colleagues about this, um, there is a pyramid, and you've got to prioritise that. If you want that hierarchy to be something different than this, well, that's something for you to go through a process yourself. But this is the way the world is at this moment. This is the way it works. Um, change is something very different. Thanks for listening. Share this on. Share on the articles. Again, great work by Kate McClearmont over at Fairfax. Um, Fairfax have had their struggles as of all large news organisations, um, but compared to um, News Corp or uh, the Manchester Guardian or many other organisations, Fairfax have done their very best to try and stay through the middle and try and navigate the left and the right. Um, they did hire Clementine Ford for a bit, which, um, look, <laughs> they undid that within a few months after recognising that they'd brought on a... Uh, um, a train wreck, but um, look, if you're looking for the middle, I check them every day. Um, compared to many other news organisations, uh, they do their best to try and tow uh, where they can. And that's a hard world. That's a hard world. So I have found myself been checking Breitbart more these days, and The Guardian, but when Breitbart has some good news articles, yeah, the world's changing. Look, thanks for watching, guys. Share this on. If you think that this is wrong, talk to someone who think that it is as well, but this is the way it is on March 26th.